of our lives. It's a groundbreaking uh, film series, and your role in that was pivotal, especially in that first hour-long segment in Sickness and in Health. So we are delighted to honor your life work um, in the line of Dr. Poindexter, and if you could come, please, or should we come to you?
then you, 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 talk, you go to the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and then it's just taking over. And then 1964, you finally get to a civil rights legislation after 300 years, that started from 16 and 19. So the, the, the reason this thing about it, uh, history is so important to me, as I lecture around the country sometimes, somebody very will raise their hand and say, you know, you know, we're talking about racism, and that's God's it's gone. You got a black president. So wait a minute. Sit down and take a look at the history and then tell me why you think that. And when you start from 1619, 1864, uh, and, and, and then say, what's the likelihood that from 1864 to 2015, we've eliminated the effects of racism? It is impossible. And I would say from my own experience, every institution in this country is, is subject to racism at its core somewhere. And if you think you can do this work, and we can do this work without addressing that issue, you're, you're, you're just, you're just at, 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 you're wrong. So, you're, so your life has to be about that. And, and remember, also, love and fear with yourself. I, I can't, can't say that enough. I see my daughter is taking that picture right there. That's an Army, an Army Marshal. Uh, Dr. DRPH from Armstrong University in Savannah. <laughs> The doctoral dissertation is about social determinants of health. My goodness, I guess. <laughs> so I, I will probably uh, sit down. Uh, I've been a part of this institution in many ways, and I, I was on faculty here for, for a while. And I miss, I miss uh, Dr. Thatcher. I miss being here. And one of the great pleasures and privileges in my life is my day opportunity to work with you. So I agree with that Thursday afternoon. You know, find a brother, sit down, and make a talk. <laughs> Distinguished Award to Adewale Troutman, MD, MPH, MA, CPH, in recognition of your generosity, extraordinary service, support, commitment, dedication, research, exemplary leadership, and exceptional contributions to the fields of public and population health sciences on Tuesday, November 7th, 2017. Congratulations. develop these programs forward and I want to give thanks and honor to uh, Dr. Jenkins because you stayed the course with the Morehouse program there are now nine strong HBCU programs okay in public health we have come together as a result of that vision as a consortium and those programs are Charles Drew University University, Florida a and University, Fort Valley University, Fort Valley State University, Jackson State 
State University. Meharry Medical College. Morehouse School of Medicine. The very first. And then also we have uh, Tennessee State University. So these are the programs that we have. We are as a consortium. We were founded in the late 90s, and the very first consortium or coordinating center was at Morgan State University. Morgan State under Dr. Yvonne Bronner, followed five years later by Morehouse School of Medicine under Dr. Pat Rodney. And now it is still at the Florida A&M University, and I've been honored to serve as the coordinating chair. I also want to also give acknowledgement to uh, our staff who work with us, Ms. Marcia Augusta Lawrence, and also one of our who also work with us, Ms. Jacqueline Cromarty. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you all for this vision and this recognition, and I also have to thank someone because the reason why I am even here tonight uh, is the person that really truly is the wind beneath my wings, and that is my husband, Mr. Leo. Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We're grateful for our 
our director of medical services. If you're interested in knowing, and I hope you are interested in knowing all about what the Asian Church has to offer, you can go to amehealth.org and amec.org -E and you will be able to find all of the many things that we offer to help people. I happen to be assigned and I have been assigned the director of the health commission in July and I was elected bishop. Three months later, I was changing planes in Detroit and went into full cardiac arrest. <coughs> July 31st, I had quadruple bypass. God has a wonderful way and a wonderful sense of humor. Yes. On November the 7th of 2016, I was released from the hospital yes. one year ago today. So I am so grateful. If you find in your work that people are telling you, yes, go ahead, stop. <laughs> you do not need yes people in your life. That's right. Because then life becomes comfortable. This work has been an uphill battle since I started in 1992 and inherited first aid stations. And when I said, why aren't we doing anything to help the education of our people? I was told that that's not what the Health Commission does. Uh -huh. I began to scratch my head. <laughs> we now have what I call the public health machine of faith-based organizations. Everybody told me no. Everybody told me it was a dumb idea. They fought me left and right. But now people call our name. Yeah. Now people come and ask us to help. Yes, yes. Now we are saving lives and we're building partnerships, uh, agencies as well as uh, those vendors come to us and ask us to let them help us do our work. Students do not let anybody tell you no. The benefit being an AUC baby, MD and PH from Morehouse School of Medicine, my MD from ITC, is that I grew up in my profession with people telling me, you can do whatever it is that you're called to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So be here, be at your HBCU um, public health program, and make sure that you get the Thursday afternoon with Dr. Yeah. <laughs> In the um, bulletin, the information that is under the Lewis Stokes Legislative Service Award mm -hmm. is that of the Health Commission. Mm Figures. Figures. 
and he was less than this Daniels. But it was great because when we were talking, I said, well, you know, how do we really narrow it down and how do we actually identify the individuals with significant contributions? So I have been asked and I'm honored to announce our community service legislative awardees for this evening. And one of them will be Dr. Deborah Renee Griffin. MD, and a member of the Family American College of Emergency Physicians. Dr. Griffin, Dr. Griffin is one of our own. She's residing in Rosewell, Georgia with her husband and children over the past 24 years. She's originally from Southern California area, which that's okay, you're in Georgia now. And, uh, and she is uh, a graduate of the Howard Medical uh, College. She has also uh, completed her residency in emergency medicine in 1992. She's a diplomat, as I said, with the American Board of Emergency Medicine. And she received her initial assist excuse me, certificate in 1996. In addition to that, Dr. Griffin has been a clinical associate professor of emergency medicine with the Philadelphia College of Medicine since 2010. She was appointed the Emergency Medicine's Subspecialty Coordinator for the Graduate Medical Education uh, Department at GMC in 2014. She has a lengthy list of uh, accomplishments. However, there's one thing that stands out that she, she, she had underlined in bold letters that she's a strong supporter of our students. She worked collectively, long time, hour, hourless, working with our pre-med students to help her really be successful. She assists them in preparing for the state board in order to be licensed, accredited, to certify the work, to be employed. 